Welcome to this fun make along event. Today I will be doing the knit version using the Red Heart Huga Fur yarn and I will also be using a worsted weight yarn. I chose Red Heart with Love. You can really do any color combination you want that fits your home decor. Feel free to mix it up. It really, it, you can even go in your stash and see what works. We will also need a pair of scissors and of course a tapestry needle to weave in those loose ends and a tape measure is also required along with a crochet hook. But for our needles, I will be working this in the round using the magic loop method. We will need two sizes and we'll talk about that next. For our needles today, we will actually be using two sizes. We will be using a size 6 4.0 millimeter needle. I love the circular. I will be working in the magic loop method and we will be covering that. And then you will also need a size 5, 3.75 millimeter needle too. Mine are interchangeable, but I also have some extra cords and this will be used for the cuffs. So, but to do a gauge swatch before we get into our project, I want you to use the size six needle and use the Red Heart with Love yarn working in a stockinette stitch to make sure that we've got the correct gauge for this project. To get started on the stocking, we are actually going to be starting just below the cuff and working down. We will come back and finish the cuff later. Um, I want to do that last just because it's so fluffy at the top. It won't be in our way while we work. To do this today, I want to show you the provisional cast on. Now, don't get scared here because this is going to be super, super easy. And also, if you decide you don't want to do a provisional cast on today, that is okay. That's totally fine. You can cast down with your favorite method, whether it's long tail or whatever, and you can come back and pick up the top stitches along the top for the cuff, or you can simply create the cuff and stitch it on later. So you've got a few options here. The method I'm going to roll it with right now is the provisional cast on. To do this, the way I like to do it, grab your favorite crochet hook or something like that that you, ha that you have, I have seen people do this with a needle, but a crochet hook does make it a little bit easier. And then grab some scrap yarn. You'll want something possibly like a cotton if you have it around. Well, anything will work. Something like a cotton or something that glides through the stitches like a bamboo that doesn't catch your yarn is just easier to, to work with later down the road. But really, it's very flexible. To get started, you will want to tie a slip knot and you don't have to have a long tail and place that on your crochet hook. Now pick up your knitting needle and grab your knitting needle and the tail end of your provisional yarn. Notice I'm working in a different color because this yarn is not going to matter later. We're going to pull it out. So it doesn't, it's a different color so you can see how I'm going to be doing this. Then we will want to have the working yarn behind our needle and our crochet hook in front of the needle, just like so. I'm gonna move some of this so nothing's behind it. Then you will yarn over your hook and pull it through. Now you don't wanna make these stitches too tight just because they don't need to be and it'll make it easier for you to work into them. Notice we have one stitch on the needle now. We'll take our working yarn behind the needle again, place the hook over the needle, yarn over, and pull that stitch through. Now we have two stitches on the needle and we will simply repeat that step until we have the amount of stitches that we need. And also I just wanna say for this event that is hosted through Marley Bird, she also has some great tutorials. And that's the nice thing about all these collaborations between these artists is between all of us, you will find the tutorial that works for you. Knitting and crochet really isn't ever a one size fits all because there's so many options available when it comes to yarn, designers, items we make and tutorials. Once you have your stitches casted on, you'll want to do a few extra chains with your hook just to give it some space and then pull your strand through and you can go ahead and you can cut this scrap yarn. And now we are set up to knit. So we will knit into these stitches with our main color. 
So we're already ready to rock and roll, which is super nice here. But now is the part where I wanna show you how to work in this magic loop method, which is not scary at all. So when you're working with the magic loop, you're just really gonna imagine that you're taking your design and you are just squishing it in half. You will have like a front side and a back side, but we're working in the round around our piece, but we're going to be working it where we're like smushing it in half essentially. So I will take the yarn, a scrap yarn that we're gonna work into, and I will take the cord and I will pull it through one side. That way I have both of my needles over here and I can kind of pull this through a little bit. I've got my cord pulled in on the left side. I've got about half my stitches on the front and half my stitches on the back. And as you can kind of see, this creates a circle and we're just gonna keep working around the circle and moving our needles as needed. So with our new color, this is such a vibrant green, we will start by pretending we are already ready to go that this is already, so I'm gonna pretend this yarn is already hooked. It normally would be worked from the back to the front, which I will show you that on the next round. So it's not actually joined quite yet. And make sure that as you're working this, that the, your stitches aren't twisted, like mine might be here. I've got my cord that went through. You wanna make sure that you're not twisting at this point or twisting at any point throughout. So I shift those. And the nice thing is with this uh, scrap yarn here, that row doesn't really matter, but the next ones do. So now I will simply knit around. We will be knitting for seven rounds, I believe. And just like so. Now I'm knitting into my scrap yarn. And once I knit across this first side, then I'll show you how to shift, turn, and work along the back side of this circle. Now that I come to the end of working the first side, and I like that we do have two different colors of yarn so you can really picture this here, how this goes. We are ready to work the stitches on the opposite side. So we will turn, and now we've put our working yarn towards the back of our work, and we are going to load the stitches onto this front needle. Pull that back needle out still have our ends hanging out over here on the left of this the, the loop for the circular needles and now we will continue without twisting the yarn we will continue working across this front now i know we're not connected here because of the way we did it but that's okay we're still going to work it like this because this next round is going to close that opening Right, and now that we're done with that, we are going to do that again, where we turn, leaving this loop out here, pulling the needle out from the back side of our work, pulling the needle into the front side, loading those stitches. And continue to go. We're just gonna continue right across this front side again. So as we get comfortable with working in the round here, I just want to note the first three rounds are knit. And if we look at this, this these charts, if you've never worked from a chart before, I highly recommend it because A, it's one way to double check the written instructions visually. And then B, sometimes you can just look at the chart, especially on a pattern like this. This is a great pattern to learn to read charts on simply because it's just knit and purl stitches. So it's very easy to visually identify what the stitches are. So for the first three rows, you'll just see these blank squares. This means that we knit. So the first three rows are knit. Then we will do two rows of purl, three more rows of knit, and then two more rows of purl. I'm going to go ahead and do these off camera because I feel like that's quite boring for you to watch me knit and purl those rows. So I've done three rows of knit and then my next row is gonna be a purl and I'm simply going to follow those instructions. We're gonna come back when it gets to be a bit more of a design aspect, but following this chart can be a great way to visually see what we're going to be doing. And each, 
each one of these, because I know right here you're looking like, wait a minute, that's not 60 stitches, it's 12. Well, we're going to be repeating this five times. So as we work across here, I'm gonna take you through row 11 next, and we will talk about how to do these repeats in the round if you're simply just looking at the chart. So here we are ready for round 11, and this is where we will start to do a little bit of our designs, but once again, don't fret, the, these textures are all done in knit and purl, which is really unique because there's a lot of different textured looks in this stocking, but they're very easy to create. So for row 11, if we're looking at this chart, we'll count that the first five stitches are purl, and then we have three knit stitches and then four purl stitches. And then we will repeat that segment five times all the way around. So to get started, I will simply purl the first five. And then knit three. and then I will purl four. And I simply repeat that again and again all the way around. So purl five, and then knit three, and then purl four. Complete those repeats all the way around. We'll come back for round 12. Actually, we're gonna come back for round 13 because round 12 is simply a repeat of round 11. So they're the same and complete those two rounds and we will come back for round 13. All right, so for round 13, we will purl four, knit one, purl one, knit three, and then purl three. So purl four, knit one, purl one, knit three, and then purl three. And we repeat that around until the end. So that segment will be repeated five times of purl four, knit one, purl one, knit three, purl three. Moving right along to round 14. For round 14, we will purl three, knit three, purl one, knit three, and purl two. And then we will repeat that around. So it's purl three, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl two. Round 15 is purl two, knit three, purl three, knit three, purl one. So once again, that will be a purl two, knit three, purl three, and knit three, and purl one, and that will be our repeat section around. For round 16, we will be doing purl one, knit three, purl five, knit three. So that is purl one, knit three, purl five, knit three, and that is our repeat. So once again, it's purl one, knit three, purl five, knit three. And now for row round 17, we will be doing a knit three, and then we will purl seven, knit one, purl one. 
So once again, that is knit the first three, purl seven, And then we will knit one and purl one, and that will be our repeat around. Round 18, this is halfway through this diamond part. So for round 18, we will knit two, and then purl nine, And then we will knit one. And that is our repeat that we will do five times around. Once again, that is a knit two, purl nine, knit one. For round 19, we are going to knit one, and then purl one, and then knit one, and then we will purl seven. and then knit two. And that will be our repeat around. So once again, that's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl seven, knit two. Round 20, we will start with a purl one, and then we will knit three, and purl five, and then knit three. And that's our repeat for round 20. Once again, that's purl one, knit three, purl five, knit three. For round 21, we will start by purling two, and then knit three, and purl three, and then knit three, and purl one for a repeat around. That is a knit two, or sorry, excuse me, that is a purl two, knit three, purl three, knit three, purl one. For round 22, we will start with a purl three, knit three, purl one, knit three, and purl two. That's our repeat. So that is a purl three, knit three, purl one, knit three, and purl two. For round 23, we will start by purling four, then knit one, and purl one, knit three, and purl three. And that's our repeat for round 23. So once again, that is a purl four, knit one, purl one, knit three, and purl three. And here we are at round 24. For round 24, this will also be the same for round 25. We are going to purl five, and then we will knit three. and purl four. And that's our repeat around. So once again, our repeat this time will be to purl five, knit three, and then purl four. That will be the same for round 25. And then round 26 and 27 are simply rounds of purls, so I'm going to do those off camera. And then round 28 through 30 are simply rows of knit. 
And so I'm also going to do that off camera and round 31 and 32 are two rounds of pearl. So I would be doing that off camera because I think for you to sit here and, and watch me do those rounds, it's quite boring since it's just simple knit and pearl rounds. So we're going to come back on camera for round 33. So you can push pause on this video, work through round 32, and then press play to join me back here for round 33.